Welcome to Hue at Home, I'm Tracy Koga. Once again, we're into rehearsal with Winnipeg's contemporary dancers. They are going to premiere Eden Cohen's Looking Glass to the musical score of Philip Glass. It is an incredible journey, not only for the dancers, but for the choreographer himself. So let's go behind the scenes with Winnipeg's contemporary dancers and more about Looking Glass. For Winnipeg's contemporary dancers, we have a special guest, a gem, all the way from Israel, Edan Cohen. And Edan, you've secretly been working throughout the months with a stellar cast in creating a special work called Looking Glass. What is Looking Glass? The work is really inspired by Philip Glass's music, or to be more specific, Philip Glass's solo piano etudes. We have a beautiful pianist in the space who's going to play the etudes live for us. And it's really when you think about Philip Glass's music mm -hmm. and his interpretation of time. So basically when you think of this minimalist music that accumulates layer by layer, right? Because it goes kind of he kind of goes on and on and on and then he adds another layer. But it creates that sense of looping and it distorts our understanding of time, of linear mm. time. So we were playing a lot with that concept of musicality and time and how, you know, we go through life um, dancing, enjoying ourselves, but our bodies constantly change and are mm -hmm. affected by time. I think for dancers, this is a very sensitive subject because yes. the body is our instrument. And we were kind of playing with those notions, with the experience of the dancers, with the way that I filter those experiences mm -hmm. or the questions that are being asked. Oh, well, the movement that we saw, the music and the flowing of the, of the bodies and everything like that is just, it's so, it's mesmerizing, Thank really. You. And the dancers now, working with our dancers, how is it different or the same? You know, you've been in, you've been from Israel. You're a dancer yourself. You have a company in in Vancouver. Are dancers all the same across the board, or are Winnipeg ones special? Hmm. Winnipeg ones are definitely special, but you know, the my approach in working with dancers is really that um, it's people, right? And mm -hmm. we're all individuals, and I think that the days of, you know when all dancers had to have the same body type and be the same age and you know and slim and all of that are hopefully behind us and i find a real pleasure in meeting new dancers and seeing how sometimes already made vocabulary or dance is being interpreted mm -hmm. by their bodies uh, so it's been a treat <laughs> yeah and creating something that's new and different. Is there some signature things that you have in your bag of tricks, so to speak, as a choreographer, Edan? Okay, can you, sorry, can well, you? Well, I'm, as a choreographer and trying to create your stamp and, and your 
brand of dance, is there certain movements or, or certain things that you rely mm. on when you, and I call it the bag of tricks, right? When you're right, creating things. Right, right, right. Yeah. That's a, a really interesting question. You know, I try with each new creation mm -hmm. to, at least in a small part, reinvent myself and it's easier for me when I am inspired or almost like driven by the music that I choose. Mm -hmm. So sometimes I see myself as an interpreter of the music as opposed to, you know, we have this kind of renaissance white male idea of the artist as an inventor. So it's almost like, you know, we, we need to be like Leonardo da Vinci and reinvent, literally reinvent the wheel. Yes. <laughs> and it's something that I find to be a false notion mm -hmm. because the way that culture works, it accumulates. It's an accumulation of ideas. And I, I find a lot of pleasure in being that kind of, you know, second base to the music or to the theme or the subject matter that we're working with. Having that said, of course, there's my personality and perspective, and I'm sure that outside viewers can almost like look at it and say, oh, I can see the Idan in it, or I can mm -hmm. see kind of Idan's notes in it, or mm -hmm. you know, the way that I see the world, or the way that I see the dancers and how we interact. Mm -hmm. So it's a little bit of both. And I love that because I come from a ballet background, so it's either, you know, glissage, jeté, you know, point tendu. Yeah. They're the movements, the set set of movements that you have. But yeah. I love that in your creative dance, in contemporary dance. You're right. You have that freedom. Freedom now. Yeah. Coming from Israel to Canada. Yeah. What has that been like uh -huh. for you as a person, Idan? Exciting and challenging at the mm -hmm. same time. You know, the experience of being an immigrant and um, leaving your world behind, and I moved to Canada when I was 37, so mm -hmm. I was already a mature artist, mm -hmm. and I have a company that still operates in Israel, so I go back and forth, and I do some international work. But I really appreciate the fact that I can be here and build a better life mm -hmm. for myself. Um, it's a very, you know, it's, it's a personal experience that you go through. There are many moments of struggle and many mm -hmm. moments that you need your home base. Mm -hmm. But I find, you know, Canada to be a beautiful place to live in and um, I, I feel very proud and fortunate to be able to call myself Canadian. That's so, so that's so wonderful. Yeah. And right now, it, it's tough times in Israel for it the people is. back there. And when you think what is happening, not only in Israel but around the world, but here you are in the middle of the prairies. It's minus thirty. <laughs> You've got these incredible dancers on the cusp of premiering a work. I guess personally, how does that make you feel? But also, what does the future hold? for dancers, like we're gonna meet another young dancer shortly. Dancers now, dancers of the future. You know, I always feel that being a dancer is both one of the hardest jobs in the world mm -hmm. and also one of the biggest privileges. And you know, like it's, it's I, I see it as a choice that you make every day. You wake up in the morning, sometimes your body is sore and sometimes you're tired or you're going through emotional stuff. And we're trying to create a world where we can um, inhale and hold all these emotions while we're in the studio sharing art. We have a responsibility towards our audiences and the people that come and, you know, and, and watch our creation. So it's, it's a very, very interesting, I think, uh, life choice to mm -hmm. do uh, or to take. Being an artist generally and being a dancer even more so. Mm -hmm. Well, we are so happy that artistic director Jolene Bailey 
has made you a guest artist in residence. We can hardly wait to see Looking Glass, and I'm sure all the dancers here have been, uh, you know, so overjoyed to have the privilege of working with you, and we sure Thank hope you. that you come back again. Thank you. I, I share the feeling. I would love to come back again. I've, I've been having a wonderful time working with the dancers and with Jolene and with the team of designers and musicians that we have here. It's, it's a real treat, so thank you. Oh, thank you. Don't go away. Hugh at Home will continue right after this. Welcome back to Hugh at Home, and we have one of the dancers here in the hot seat, Andres, all the way from Colombia, but now you've been in Winnipeg for four years, and this has nothing to do with the dance. What was your first impression of Winnipeg? <laughs> um, I would say the way that people behave oh. is very different. Um, it's very kind, but in some ways it's less uh, passionate. Oh, okay. People back at home in Colombia are more passionate about their feelings and how they show it to other people. Okay, so um, like huggers. And yeah, a lot of hugs, a lot of kisses. <laughs> oh. uh, in here, that changes a little bit, but people are a lot more kind and okay. open to new ideas. Well, definitely. Uh, so yes. that's that's amazing. And oh. the cold, for sure. Oh, the cold, cold, for sure. <laughs> yes, it is. It is very cold. It is winter. Yeah. Okay, so let's go back. Dance. How did Andreas get into in interested in dance? Well, it's been a long journey, but um, to make it a little bit shorter, I, uh, I studied first theater and music. Mm -hmm. Then I discovered a few classes of movement uh, in university. Um, when I was about to turn 18, I started doing uh, contemporary and ballet because a teacher recommended to me. Mm -hmm. And then I, I just fell in love with it. And oh. I was like, wow, I, I want to go. In Colombia, you can't um, have a degree in dance. Okay. So I wanted to pursue that, and I looked everywhere until I found my opportunity here. And and now I you're just, here, I yes. Just, yeah, I just came and here. And so you are a graduate from the school, and now you are dancing in mm -hmm. Looking Glass. What has been the experience for you working with Idan and the other dancers? Well, it's been very, very interesting uh, because uh, I have never worked in a piece with a pianist life, mm -hmm. uh, so it's very challenging for everyone, but you also feel that sense of community. Yes. Everyone is helping each other. Yeah. If you have any questions, you can ask anyone in the group and they will all help you out. Um, so even though it's very challenging working with live music, um, mm -hmm. it's really nice because it brings everyone together. Every challenge that we go through brings everyone together. If there is a point emotionally that we feel challenged physically or musically, uh, we always have each other to rely on. So that's, that's been really nice. In most dance productions, there is a storyline and there are characters. For Looking Glass, Andreas, how, I guess, do the dancers relate to each other? Mm -hmm. Are they through characters or is it through movement? I would say for, through movement, for sure. Uh, the first thing that we see is how the music changes the time of the piece, then the time changes the dancers. So is the narrative is 
within each of us and how our bodies change throughout time. Mm -hmm. um, then how we feel it emotionally, the certain moves that uh, resemble that feeling of age and time going through your body. And then there is little duets, moments in group sections that we relate to each other and try to see how that's happening to each other. Wow. And then how can we connect to each other through that struggle of going through time and through life. And that must be pretty heavy. Have you ever thought about getting old? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, um, yeah, nostalgic is a big thing in this piece, for sure. Mm -hmm. um, I can say that I have a couple of rehearsals that they are so powerful and the music is beautiful and so much that's beautiful and you just, you just tear up a little bit because it's such a nostalgic piece and it's so beautiful and everyone is going through so many things in their characters uh, and in life. Yes. Um, so yeah, it's for sure very uh, nostalgic. Uh, I well, yeah. I mean, such an amazing experience for you. Who have you looked up to and who have maybe been your mentors along the way of your up and coming career? Um, that's a very good question. <laughs> uh, I would, to be honest, I would say Jolene is one of them. Um, I've been working with Jolene for a couple of years now. Before I graduated, I started doing some projects here. Mm -hmm. um, and I think uh, this company is a really good example of getting organized and fighting for making art happening in the city. Mm -hmm. um, so that's a really good thing to look to. Uh, yes. to look up to yes. um, and also all my fellow dancers I wasn't a very experienced dancer when I started um, so I've learned from everyone they everyone most of the people that have been dancing have been dancing for years and years for many years <laughs> and I haven't so it's it's really nice to be able to learn from everyone oh yes they all have different tips um, that help me all the time so wow. I look up to all the dancers here too Continue that. That is definitely the right attitude. You can always learn from everybody else. And yeah. we wish you all the best. And you're right. Speaking of opportunities, uh, we really want to thank Jolene and Winnipeg's Contemporary Dancers for giving the opportunity to people like yourself, uh, Andreas. And so lastly, yeah. any words of advice for maybe any other young dancer out there? Yes, I would say um, follow your passion more than a way of movement or an idea that we have of what kind of dancers we can be, if you follow what you love to do, you're going to find your path. Um, and then you're going to enjoy it. And you're not going to be there because of an idea that you have of what it is to be a dancer. Mm -hmm. More of um, how you want to live your life to the fullest and with more passion. Yes, yeah. just like Andreas. <laughs> So thank you so much. Thank you. All the best for the shows. Okay, thank you and so speaking much. of Looking Glass, that starts February 9th and it runs through to February 12th right here at the Rachel Brown Theater. And tickets are on Eventbrite. Once again, thanks to all of our special guests on today's show. And whatever you do today, go out and make it the best day ever. See you next time on Hue at Home.